So here is our article, Sunlight and Life. And remember, our focus question is to understand a little bit more about how these producers are making or seeming to make these energy storage molecules. We also had some questions about what this chloroplast is and, and what it does. So we can be looking for evidence in the text to see if any of our questions get answered. Let's get started. Introduction. The edge of a big lake is full of life. Fish dart through bright green reeds, ducks dive for algae growing in the shallow mud, and insects buzz everywhere. However, if you go out to the middle of the lake and dive to the bottom, you'll find a dead zone, a dark and barren area with hardly any organisms. No fish, no plants, not much of anything. So this is, I wanna just quickly add a comment here. This would mean there isn't really a complete ecosystem. It doesn't really have those abiotic and biotic factors. Why do some areas support so much life while others are relatively lifeless? To survive, organisms need energy. We knew this from our populations and resources unit. And this energy comes from energy storage molecules. These molecules store energy that can be released in an organism's body. Energy storage molecules include glucose, starch, and fat. Ecosystems with lots of organisms need to have lots of energy storage molecules to keep all those organisms alive. Some ecosystems contain lots of energy storage molecules, while others don't contain as many. Only producers can make the energy storage molecules that fuel life in an ecosystem. Okay, so I'm actually going to highlight this and I'm gonna add this note, right? This is what we were seeing in the digital model. Producers are creating the ESNs. So we are correct that that is what we were thinking. Energy storage molecules are made mostly of carbon and carbon is all around us in the form of carbon dioxide gas. Producers take in carbon dioxide molecules from the air and water. Okay, so we saw that. That was really key, right? So the producers do not take in ESM, but they do take in CO2. Using energy from sunlight, producers combine the carbon dioxide molecules with water molecules. Aha, so it looks like, that, oh, I'm gonna add that note, right? We were wondering what's happening when those things come together. So the carbon dioxide and the water come together and are combined. That's what we were seeing, right? And then it kind of poofed into something else changing them into glucose molecules and oxygen molecules. Okay, so I'm gonna add a note here. If we have starting things and it ends as something else, this is a chemical reaction that's occurring, right? We learned in the last unit, so the reactants are that, um, sorry, the carbon dioxide and the water, and then our products are the ESM and it looks like oxygen. Interesting. This process is called photosynthesis. Through photosynthesis, producers take carbon from abiotic matter. So they were taking the carbon from, I think we saw carbon dioxide. So let's add that note. So abiotic carbon dioxide comes in and move it into biotic matter in the form of glucose. So then afterwards it's biotic and it's an ESM. Then the organisms in an ecosystem can use that glucose to make other energy storage molecules like starch and fat. Oh, so the other organisms we saw, right? Eating, so other organisms then intake the ESM by eating the producers. So we saw that the producers 
Uh, we're giving the energy storage molecules to the consumers. And we know with the food web that they are the consumer populations of the producers. So they take that energy in that way. Interesting. So here, let's, let's zoom into this a little bit, actually, so we can see. So we see the carbon dioxide is coming in and it's going into this chloroplast with the water. There's our reactants. Um, and then we have a chemical reaction where the atoms are rearranged to form these new products, right? We saw that in chemical reactions. If we look, there's our, our carbon. I see it now in a new form. I see these white atoms, uh, which I think are hydrogen. They are in a new um, molecule. And then we've got a lot of these red atoms, which is oxygen in a new molecule as well. The process of photosynthesis takes place in tiny cell parts called chloroplasts. Okay, so this is kind of like we were wondering what these chloroplasts were. This is kind of like a machine or the or the factory where, I'm gonna put that in uh, quotes, the factory where the ESM are made. So we would expect maybe then, if we go back and take a look in the digital model, that are these chloroplasts only in the producers? Oh, <laughs> only producers have them, right? So, okay. The producers can only do photosynthesis. In order to get energy to do photosynthesis, producers need sunlight. Okay. Sunlight is one reason some ecosystems have so many more energy more storage molecules and so much more life than others. With more sunlight, producers like plants and algae can do more photosynthesis. They take more carbon out of the atmosphere and turn it into more energy storage molecules to meet their energy needs. As producers make more energy storage molecules, consumers, the animals that eat producers, get more energy storage molecules from eating the producers. Okay, so this is like what we were seeing in our populations and resources unit. If there is more photosynthesis happening, more eating can occur by the consumers, and they also will have more energy storage molecules. Those consumers use energy from the energy storage molecules to survive and reproduce, right? That's something we found out in populations and resources. I'm gonna highlight this to make the connection. Increasing in number. Secondary consumers, the ones that eat animals, are able to get more energy storage molecules from eating the primary consumers that ate the plants. Okay, so if, if this is what it sounds like, we're kind of thinking here of a food web, right, um, where we've got the producers make the ESM, and then if I could do an arrow, the, consu the primary consumers are the consumer population of the producers, and they get energy. And then we've got the secondary consumers eat the primary. So if we're thinking about our food web, we'd have the producers, we'd have an arrow, the primary consumers, and then another um, part to our food web. So maybe you can think of an example of this kind of chain. An ecosystem that gets lots of sunlight can support lots of organisms, while an ecosystem that gets less sunlight can support fewer organisms. To find out more about other ecosystems where the amount of sunlight has a big effect on the amount of living things, read one of the chapters that follow. So we're not gonna do that right now, but that is something that you can do as an extension if you want to learn a little bit about how ecosystems deal with different amounts of photosynthesis occurring. Um, but this has really answered a lot of our questions about what we were seeing in the digital model.